What's up guys, I'm Iris Shaw and this is Nuggets of Truth. Now one of the core beliefs of Christianity is that of the Trinity. And within the Trinity, we have God the Father, we have God the Son, and we have God the Holy Spirit. And for more on the Trinity, check out our three-part series under our Nuggets of Truth category entitled The Trinity. Now, if we look at the beginning of the book of John, he mentions that the Word was with God and the Word was God. So who or what is the word and what is John talking about? So let's just dive straight into that scripture, shall we? John chapter 1 verse 1 through 2, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now, I've heard some say that this word translated here as him should really be it, and that the word wasn't God, but it was a God. Now, with that said, that then begs the question, why would John record this it as being in the beginning with God as well as being a God? And since John's John is referencing the beginning, let's take a look at the beginning. I think that's, I think that's the first thing we got to do. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 through 2 it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters now according to the first two verses of the Bible God created the heavens and the earth now in our Trinity series which as I said earlier is under our nuggets of truth category that word translated as God is the Hebrew word Elohim which is plural and is translated as both God and gods. Now, this makes sense since we as Christians believe that God isn't a single person, but a trinity. It's made up of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which I know can be a little confusing, but stay with me. So if God is Elohim in the beginning, then where is the word? John said that the Word was in the beginning with God. And if the Word is another God, a little g God, then the Word should be mentioned in the beginning with Elohim. Right? Maybe it wasn't that important that God dictated it to the author of Genesis to write down the, that the Word was there. But let's see. Let's go back to John's account and read the next verse. John chapter 1 verse 3. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay, no, he, he seems important. So, that can't be it, that he wasn't mentioned. He has to be mentioned, right? So, if nothing was made without him, then he had to be there. So, if this isn't God, and this isn't a part of the Trinity, it is a little g God, then we should read Genesis 1-1 as in the beginning the gods created the heavens and the earth because John said all things were made through him without him was not anything made that was made. So now we have this idea that God needed a false god in order to create everything. So to me this is a, this is a big red flag. This does not sound right at all. I'm seeing a big problem with this idea that the word is an it as well as the word being another God, a God with a little g, because now we're saying that there was a God that was with God Almighty before creation and that this God wasn't, wasn't created by the Almighty. In fact, the Almighty needed this God's help to create all of creation, everything we see and everything we can't see. Now, one could argue that God Almighty didn't need his help, but chose to let the word help him create everything. Let's just, let's just explore this idea for a second. Did God need or did he receive help to create the earth and everything in it? And all of creation, not just the earth and everything in it, all of creation. Let's, let's look at the, the book of Job. Because the book of Job records the conversations between Job and his friends after Job loses everything except his wife. Now, they each take turns basically saying that he had done something wrong because bad things don't happen to good people. 
But let's look at Job's response to Bildad. This is Job declaring who God is. Job chapter 9 verse 8, it says, Who alone stretched out the heavens and trampled the waves of the sea? Notice how Job makes it explicit that God stretched out the heavens alone. But again, someone could argue that's the gods of Genesis 1-1. And, you know, fair enough, fair enough. Let's, let's look at another verse, this time from the mouth of God Almighty himself. Isaiah 44, verse 24. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb, I am the Lord, who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. According to the Lord himself, he created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them by himself. He had no help from any other God or being. So then how can the word that John speaks of in John 1 be another God? How could Elohim in Genesis 1.1 be anything other than a trinity. But you know what? Let, let's just keep reading John's account. John chapter 1, verse 4 through 5. It says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Hmm. Now this sounds eerily familiar, doesn't it? John chapter 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Hmm. And again in John eleven twenty five through 27, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet, he, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. And probably the most well-known of these three verses, John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So if the word that John spoke about in John 1 is just another God and and it's an it, then there's an inaccuracy in the Bible, which would deem the entire Bible fallible, which means that it would be all lies. But since we know that the Bible is the word of God, and it is God-breathed, and there is no inaccuracies or contradictions within it, I don't believe that the word is another God or an it, but that the word is one of the persons of the Godhead, the Trinity. Now that just leaves us with the question of, which one? How can we be 100% sure which, which person in the Godhead, which person in the Trinity is the Word of God? Well, I believe that John makes it real simple for us. Let's keep going. John chapter 1, verse 6 through 18. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. John doesn't leave us hanging with who the word is. He makes it really clear for us. The word is Jesus. 
And you know, this isn't the only time that John says this. Let's skip all the way to the last book of the Bible, Revelation. John reveals in his vision of the end of the age, a rider on a white horse. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 through 16. It says, Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So, a lot of people be like, well, how do you know it's, that it, this is Jesus? It, it never mentions his name. Well, you know, let's, let's look at that very last verse for a second. Verse 16. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Two chapters earlier, John describes the battle between the Lamb of God and the kings of the earth led by the beast of revelation so let's read that real quick revelation chapter 17 verse 14 they will make war on the lamb and the lamb will conquer them for he is lord of lords and king of kings and those with him are called and chosen and faithful so then this just leaves one last question so if the word is the lamb of god then who is the lamb of god but, you know, John doesn't leave us hanging. He records John the Baptist's words in John 1. John 1, 28 through 29. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. According to John the Baptist, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Here's another verse for you, Revelation chapter 7, 13 through 14. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Who washes us clean with his blood other than Jesus? By what name are the people of the world saved by other than Jesus? The Lamb of God and the Word is none other than Jesus, the Son. Now with that said, can we get one little bit deep for a second? If Jesus is the Word of God, then when we speak and recite scripture, we are literally speaking God. This would now make sense why the Hebrew writer describes the word as this. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, he says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word of God is active and living and sharper than any two-edged sword, because the word of God is is Jesus. Peter seems to be under the same impression of the author of Hebrews because look at what he says. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22 through 23. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. Peter says we have been born of imperishable seed through the living and abiding word of God, Jesus. 
We are redeemed through Christ Jesus, and he is the word of God. This is why Paul says that our spiritual armor includes the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians six seventeen, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Our defensive and offensive weapon is the word of God. Why? Because Jesus is the word of God. He isn't dead, but he is alive. He's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. He's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. He is the word made flesh. Our greatest weapon is the word of God because the word of God is Jesus. So just to sum everything up for you guys, the word isn't just an it and it's it's not another god that helped the almighty create everything the word is jesus the son of god the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world therefore the word is in fact god because jesus is god all things were created through him and nothing was created without him when we quote scripture we are literally using jesus as our weapon of defense and offense in our spiritual battle because jesus is alive and well seated upon his throne he lives through us so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it answered any questions that you may have had about the word. If you feel we missed something or maybe we maybe you have a question that we didn't answer about the word of God, let us know in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.